and welcome to Horror Movies and Shit. I'm your host, Jim, and with me as always is... Mark. Mark, how are you today? Oh, I am just absolutely delightful, Jim. How are you? You're never delightful, so what's wrong with you? <laughs> I told you I was feeling sick. I know. <laughs> so, Mark, we have somebody very special with us today. Do you want to oh, introduce yeah. our guest? Um, we have Mr. Anthony Cousins, filmmaker extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. Um... And um, I was going to say, it was going to be almost like a joke, but it wasn't. I was going to say, like, congratulations, Anthony, on Frogman uh, being, like, the number one movie on Screenbox. I was going to say, as soon as I clicked in, it was on the Splash page, but yep. <laughs> it was Frog Splash. <laughs> anyway. Usually he makes up something a lot more grand for people, but mm -hmm. I, I, he's he's very muted today. I don't know what I am. I, I told well, you. You know, I'm not horrible the... pun or not thank you i appreciate <laughs> it so um mark and i actually have actively avoided speaking about frogman because we both watched it for the first time and we would not discuss it with each other until we got to talk to you Ooh, fun so okay. this will be interesting I'm, I'm curious to see what mark thinks so, mark, uh, you want to you want to start yeah, well, okay, so Jim just sent me, like, uh, a text with emojis with all th thumbs down, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> Did I? So, um, okay, found footage, right? Found mm -hmm. footage is a subgenre which a lot of people have a lot of problems with. I don't. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy found footage. Um, I really enjoy the... Um, almost DIY aspect of it, the guerrilla filming, if you would. And I thought Frogman really took some of the best parts of some of the best found footage movies and kind of put them together. I saw, like, there was what I could see as, hey, obviously Blair Witch Project, but um, the taking of Deborah Logan mm -hmm. was in there. Um, there was another one, I uh, can't remember now. But anyway, I thought for the first... 30 minutes, like a lot of found footage. Um, not a lot happens, but, and this is the key thing in found footage movies, the characters didn't annoy me, right? And right. I think that that's something which, you know, is so prevalent in a lot of these movies where it's just babbling, talking heads, and nobody's entertaining. They're all just like sitting, talking at each other. But I really like the chemistry with the, uh, the, the main three actors. I agree. And so we're not we're not gonna go all the way through it. Like we'll just kind of talk through it, Jim. Yes, Mark. What is your kind of just overall feelings before we so dive in? I I actually really enjoyed it, and I'm not a found footage fan, to be perfectly honest. It's it's not my favorite genre. I I hated the Blair Witch Project, <laughs> um, with a passion. I I much prefer the second one, um, but I like I like the concept behind Frogman. It was a lot of fun, and my big thing is. The older I get, the less I identify with main characters, and your main characters were very relatable, and that that mm -hmm. made it a lot more enjoyable for me. So, I, I do have a question though. With, I, I, like, with when you see movies like The Blair Witch and stuff, the, the script isn't that fleshed out. How fleshed out are your scripts when you when you when you were shooting Frogman? Uh, well, so this is our first time doing found footage. And by right. the way, it's like, it, you know, the funny thing is when we made it, like, I'm a huge fan of found footage. We didn't try to make a, like, found footage movie for mainstream audiences. It, it really mm -hmm. felt like we were like, no, if we're going to do found footage, like, let's, you know, be true to the genre. Um, I knew what I wanted to see uh, that hadn't been done. Um, mm -hmm. I guess, or like hadn't been done the way that we wanted to do it. And the character thing, it means so much to me that people, uh, you know, keep bringing up the characters being likable versus usual found footage movies. Cause that was like our number one goal when writing this movie was like, even in some of my favorite found footage movies, I couldn't tell you who the characters were and right. whoever's behind the camera, like almost always gets lost. And I was like, Let's make these characters that you can connect. Whether you like them or not, you can at least understand what they're doing um, and understand what they're all about. Um, so that's kind of how we went into writing it. And, yeah, it was really like I thought, you know, if you don't like found footage, you're probably going to hate this movie. Because <laughs> we play into, yeah, the long, drawn-out beginning and some of the tropes. And it's, uh, yeah, God, it mean, it's crazy to me. And it means so much that there's people that don't generally like found footage that enjoy it. 
Um, but regarding the script, we wrote it. We we wrote like an airtight script, in my opinion. Okay. Um, and the intent was to give that to everybody, give that to the actors. I gave it to the actors and I said, read it once and then forget it. And then we're just going to go into this and every scene will kind of remind each other what the intent behind the scene is, what we have to get to. But like, let's try and keep it loose. And it turned out the actors weren't all that comfortable doing that. (laughs) So, so we actually, I was trying to approach it Blair Witchy and none of them had done found footage before. None of them had uh, done a whole lot of improv. Um, So they felt much more comfortable sticking to the script. So that's something I think, I think a good director doesn't have a directing style that you force everyone to uh, abide by. I think a good director figures out what works for his actors or their actors and learn how to work with them to make them comfortable. Because like what you're doing behind the camera is so much easier than what the actors are doing in front of the camera. They're like so much more vulnerable and like, like they have to be more comfortable than I have to be comfortable. So I was like, all right, we'll follow the script. Um, and because of that, we ended up shooting um, some stuff that ended up not working at all. And we like, we shot for 10 days, shot a good chunk of the third act, realized it wasn't working <laughs> and had to take a break from shooting and rewrite the whole third act. <laughs> Uh, so found, yeah, this is our first time doing found footage and it was uh, definitely a learning experience. So I know you, you did a podcast with my buddy Colby, um, from the horror house podcast. And I know, um, Taylor, uh, called out some, uh, Lovecraftian themes that he noticed that I didn't, cause I'm not a big Lovecraft mm-hmm. fan, but I know you are. Mm-hmm. Um, so d- what, I can't even remember the name of the story that you talked about on, um, on the podcast that you said influenced it so much. Uh, the um, shadow over Innsmouth. That's it. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> um, what other, what are some of your other influences though? Um, I mean, obviously other than the mm-hmm. Blair Witch, um, what, what are some of your uh, inspirations for your writing? Cause I watched a few of your other shorts and they're a lot of fun. I have a lot, oh, thank you. I, they, they were a lot of fun. Um, and we'll talk about them, but what are some of your other influences with, with regards to your directing style and your writing style? Sure. Um, I mean, <laughs> Frogman in particular, for the record, I love Book of Shadows. I love okay. that movie. Uh, so that, I mean, not so much of an influence on this one, but um, definitely just like anything that just goes off the rails like that, mm-hmm. I am such a fan of. I yeah. hate safe sequels. Yeah. Um, it's so easy to make a safe sequel. Like figure out what people liked about the first one, replicate it, and you can keep doing that until the diminishing returns start. And then you got to take a break and then you come back and then the nostalgia lets you d- just do it all over again. Right. And I, I love the sequels that are just like, we're just going to do what we think would be cool and is almost never what anybody wanted. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how cult movies are born. Right. Um, it's, it's the exorcist two syndrome. Oh, God. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'd say Cronenberg is a huge influence on me. The Fly is my favorite movie of all time. I mean, that's why we have like a body horror transformation in Frogman. My right. first short, When Susser is Stirs, was heavily Cronenberg inspired and The Fly inspired. Um, any any time I can work uh, like Lovecraft, cosmic horror, or body horror um, into something, I will, <laughs> even if it yeah. even if it's a little forced. <laughs> I have a Lovecraft shirt on. Look at you. Ooh, what is it? <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. But is that the because of... Oh, okay. It's... Hell yeah. Great God. <laughs> the, great, the great one himself. <laughs> Mark, do you have another question? Uh, okay. Uh, so, so uh, how long was this... How, the, you said you had to, do, like, rewrite the last uh, third of it. So how long did it take from, you know, start to finish? Oh, for God. The, for the shooting. Not the writing, uh, just the shooting schedule. <laughs> So we shot for 10 days initially. That was in uh, like September 2021. Um, yeah, shot a good chunk of the third act and realized we had to rethink the whole thing. I think we took about two weeks off, rewrote it, came back together and shot for another like five days. And then uh, after that, um, I mean, you know, I, we, sh- we premiered the movie in September of, of last year, 2023. And we shot pickups after that premiere. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we, I, I don't think, 
I think Telluride Horror Show in October was our first, like, okay, we're done. We're not touching this anymore. We're leaving it alone. Like, that. Uh, that's when we were officially done. But, um, yeah, it was just, like, we, we like we had to come together to get pickups here and there. I moved out of the state, so I'd have to come back, which kind of slowed things down. Um, and then, you know, the longer you let something, like, linger – you're going to come up with more ideas. So it was like every time we got back together to shoot a pickup that we had to do, we we came up with like three other new ideas by that point. So it was like, and we're going to shoot this and this and this, Um, which uh, I I hope we learned lessons on that because the the, the goal for Frogman 2 is just to just shoot it in one go, get it done with, (laughs) move on with our lives because this essentially took like three and a half years, which is just – I don't want to take that long on one movie again. <laughs> Cartoon That's frog true. man, right? Yeah. <laughs> or frog people, I guess. Oh no, yeah, I thought frog men. I, I was I was a big I was a big fan of uh, Frogman the fucking that, that when you said the that on, on pod, when you said it on Colby's podcast, I was like, "That's pretty great." <laughs> so that, I like so that. how do you feel about that tagline catching on? Frogman fucks. Yeah, that one. Uh, I, I mean, I love it. I, it's not something that any of us like expected really. Right. Um, like even w- when we wrote it, when we shot it in the edit room, none of us were ever like, that's it. That's going to be this movie's identity. That's the right. scene. Um, but you know, I think if you, if you tried to create that moment, you'd probably fail anyways, you know, Absolutely. like that, that shit just happens naturally, organically. It's kind of out of your control. And that's something we've talked about going into the sequel too. It's like, Oh God, like, how do we follow up Frogman Fox? Do we have to, like, do we have to bring it back somehow? And I'm like, I think if we try, it's going to be cringy and, like, <laughs> like eye rolly, and it's just, you just yeah. got to let it happen. Right. Absolutely. I agree. Lightning in a bottle. <laughs> so, yeah. so, Mark, you never yes. answered my question when, when I asked you because we refused to talk about Frogman. Do you yes. think, do you think Frogman fucks, Mark? I, I'm pretty sure, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Jim? I know it does. <laughs> He, I know. He, he does it. Frog, <laughs> he does it froggy style. There you go. You can take uh, that. Uh, uh. So I know you said, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, he's he's based on an urban an urban legend. Um, do you have any plans to explore other urban legends? Yes. Because um, I'd really love you to do the skunk ape. The skunk Marco. ape. That'd be fun. You know, I that, I love like that. There's untapped, uh, like Bigfoot. Uh, what would you call them? I don't know. Variants the, yeah. out there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah, skunk ape, swamp ape, like gr- the grass man. I feel like you could get weirder. Like we've all seen Bigfoot a million <laughs> times. And like, if yep. you're going to do a Bigfoot again, like do something strange with it, you know, have them yep. be green or like, you know, if I did skunk ape, like, I'd probably give them like skunk stripes or something. Like let's, you know, <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. Just, almost like if you're like playing like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, and you wanted to switch the outfits, it'd be like, what's right. like what's Sasquatch's like alt alt outfits? Yeah, yeah but you'd, um, have to, you'd have to give him a French accent though. Ooh, that'd be hot. Yeah, <laughs> Pepe Le Pew style. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah, I'll, I'll say I won't name names, but in Frogman Two, there's definitely plans to introduce some new monsters. Um, it's it's definitely like the the king of the monsters to our like you know godzilla i guess you could say so, frogman versus skunk ape yeah yeah there could you happen. go it could yeah. happen i mean that wand is a formidable weapon right <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to find a, a cryptid that could stand up against that no one else right? has a weapon exactly Every, everybody else just has you know what they have unfortunately yeah. <laughs> so, Anthony, how, how did uh, the process go about getting picked up with Screenbox and like being their number one movie? There is 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 that anything that you have any say in, or is it just something that goes out there and just happens? Um, I mean, so Rotting Press, my producing partners, they kind of handled all that type of stuff, but I was I was kept in the loop the whole time, at least. Um, you know, and I got to weigh in and. They let me know that Screenbox, you know, reached out and were interested in seeing the movie, um, you know, and then and I was like, well, that's awesome. Um, and then I didn't hear, you know, we released and we, I didn't hear anything else for a while. And then they're like, Screenbox is going to be our, our streaming home. And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> that's so, <laughs> that's so cool. Um, I love what they're doing. 
Um, I mean, they got the Terrifier movies on there, and they've definitely like they've embraced the new uh, like wave of found footage, you know, with like mm-hmm. Four in the High Desert and the Outwaters. Um, uh, and yeah, if you haven't seen the Outwaters and uh, the Horror in the High Desert, super cool movies. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been super fun. They've been they've been awesome. I mean, they've like embraced the Frogman Fox tagline, and I, yeah. I love all the advertising they've been doing for us. I think that's great. And Screenbox being, I mean, I don't want to say relatively new because they've been around four, five, six years now. I think um, they're really starting to come into their own, in my opinion. Like they're getting a lot of great content so far. Like. Here for Blood was the first movie I ever watched on Screenbox, and it was great. And then you get into some of the more Tubi like stuff. But then I saw him pick up Frogman. I was so excited. <laughs> yeah, it's it's awesome because like you know Shutter, you know we like we're all I assume so thankful for what Shutter's been doing for years now. Um, yep. But you know to have like you know some competition, I think is great for both of them to yeah. You know you you need that competition to come up to to keep your motivation up, you know? And I, I think both of them have kind of stepped up their game in the last like year, I'd say um, yeah. because of that, you know? And I don't think it's like a versus thing. It's like if horror is doing well and if horror streaming is doing well and indie horror is doing well, that's good for literally all of us. You know, this is absolutely. not a competition. This is like, we all come up together and succeed together. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I, so, I want to start a uh, streaming horror service. That's just for extreme movies. There's nothing Ooh. out there like that. Jim? That'd be cool. But... Like the like guinea pig movies and stuff oh, like yeah. that? Well, like he loves all, guinea, he all, loves all guinea... Uh, Yeah, he, he loves guinea pig movies. I would love loves... to see what advertisers would want to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, to I'm, sure, that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you got some interesting uh, people. Um, Jim? Yeah. Well, no, um, ask, ask your Frogman questions, Mark, because I want to talk about his shorts that I watched. So, I'm not going to so lie. Can you talk a, a little bit, uh, Anthony, about your uh, special effects? Because they were pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, that was Ryan Shadley and Becky Ingram, who um, Ryan, uh, Becky's kind of new to the team in the past few years. Um, but Ryan, I've, I've known and worked with for over a decade now, one of my best friends. And um yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be here without him because, you know, when you're uh, coming up independent filmmaker working at Jamba Juice, you don't really have money to sink into a short, you, you know, you got big ideas, but no money. And, you know, we were buddies and he liked the ideas. So the first couple, you know, we kind of did like both losing money on them. Um, but, you know, kind of wanting to prove ourselves and push ourselves and try new things. Um, and I, th- I think that's what we do on, on every single one. Like when we get into the shorts, like every short we've done, has been vastly different than, than mm-hmm. the last. And then Frogman was like, you know, someone like Ryan uh, who wants to do special effects and isn't, you know, the biggest fan of like the torture porn type stuff. Uh, his dream is to make monsters. Um, so mm-hmm. to do a full, you know, guy in a suit, you know, rubber monster is like a dream come true. Uh, so that was super fun for him. Um, it was really interesting because, like, everything we've done, we've never tried found footage before. So, like, he's you know, like he's the first person I talk to when I do anything. I'm like, okay, we're making a horror movie. The effects are the the star. So I need to know what you need and you know if this is doable. Um, and then we talk about like, okay, where are we going to shoot? What's the angle? What's the lighting? Because you don't make any effect that like sells. 360 you know like you know what direction you're going to see it and you make it work for that whereas found footage it was like dude i don't know where we're going to shoot <laughs> i don't know what the angle is going to be like we're going to be looking 360 around this location like the camera's going to be like handheld and and floating um so you like everything every effect that we do like has has to just be ready to work from every angle and we got to see frogman head to toe so that was that was very new for us and quite the challenge who designed? Did he design the creature completely, or did you have a rough idea of what you wanted it to look like? Uh, I mean, we looked at a lot of frog images, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know what's out. You know, hell comes from Frog Town. Uh, mm-hmm. There was like a weird little frog creature on Mandalorian a couple seasons ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, there was like there's a couple things to kind of look at for reference. But my big thing was like we talked about: should he look evil? Should he look sinister? Should he look intelligent? And 
I'm just kind of a frog enthusiast, even outside of horror. And I mean, the appeal of frogs is that they just are kind of neutral and cute and bug eyed. And I was like, I think we should just do that. Like, so that was kind of the images we landed on was just like, he should just look like a big ass frog. I don't think you should look sinister, you know, like he's plotting or anything like that. You should just be a big frog. Uh, so that's what we went with. <laughs> and from there, he just, he surprised me with, with the design. I saw it, you know, just in like its latex form before it was painted, uh, you know, kind of like flesh tone. And I was like, yep, that's it. He's got, <laughs> he's got some butt cheeks. He's got a big fat belly. He's got that stupid look on his face. It's perfect. <laughs> Just it like was, it was pretty perfect. I know, right? It, <laughs> it works. Although y'all didn't get to appreciate the butt cheeks in in this what? one, but I I promise you they were there. We'll try and feature. Are, are we going to get butt sequel. cheeks? Yeah, we're going to get butt cheeks in the sequel, huh? Yeah, way more butt in the sequel. <laughs> There's a timeline. I, I I I do know about one request that you got that Colby mentioned because I had heard about it that I. I mean, it would be a perfect opportunity. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so, Mark, um, our buddy Chuck from TikTok did, um, I guess, reach out to some of Anthony's people and asked to be fucked to death in, in Frogman 2. <laughs> yeah. I heard about that. <laughs> that. I mean, so do you have, do you already have a, a rough idea of what you're going to do with Frogman 2? Or is that still, are you still developing the story for that? Um. Well, it's not, you know, it's not set in stone yet but yes there's a first draft we're working on the second draft right now i actually this when we're done with this i have to read these new pages and have a call with my writer Uh um but we have the whole thing plotted like we know what the movie is it's just kind of like working out the kinks at this point and some of the finer details how i guess that's probably a a terrible question way to phrase it but like in the process how how much time time is taken up by writing the script like do you does it take a year sometimes a year and a half to to get a, a solid script that you're happy with to move forward with or is it something well, that happens just organically i'd say like everyone's different for sure mm-hmm. i mean there's a there's a script that we've been working on for like two years at this point because it's just like it's just not working for whatever reason we can't quite crack it we know there's something there and uh and we just remind ourselves, like, you know what, if it like, it's just not meant to like come into existence right now, or, or mm-hmm. it would come easier, I think. Um, but this was, this is uh, Frogman 2 is a unique experience because we've never had a, uh, like a deadline or like a ticking mm-hmm. clock, you know, like there's never been anyone like, okay, we need this by right now, you know? Um, so I think we have taken, you know, months to a year, I'd say, from conceiving to final script. Uh, but Frogman 2, you know, we've been throwing ideas around most of the year, but we sat down, I'd say a month and a half ago and like knocked out the outline, like an 11 page outline. Oh, wow. And then, and, and here we are at draft two already. So it's, it's kind of amazing to have a deadline because it's like lit a fire under our ass and it's made us realize like, Oh, you know what? Like we could do this for ourselves every time. Like we just, right. <laughs> like we just need yeah. to find that discipline. It's a great yeah. motivator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a calendar and you're like, Oh shit. Yes, right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you, do you have a, a like a, a set team that you always work with, you know, between your shorts and your, and your feature films or um, do you have people just coming in and out um, depending on, on what you're looking for? Um, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a few people that are there on every single one. Um, and I'd say like outside of that group, there's like another layer that's kind of like people that consistently come in and out of projects depending on availability. Um, and then outside of that, I'd say on almost every project we do, there's some new, some new blood on it too. Um, yeah, it's, I I mean, like when, when you start doing these things, it's uh you kind of build a family you know Mm -hmm. like you you figure out like you know what people like match your style um and what you're going for and also what people you want to be around for 12 hours a day for (laughs) for (laughs) as long as it takes to make a movie like you really got to click and like vibe together um but it's uh it's always fun to bring in new people too and um 
you know, like some really talented people that, that live where we, where we shoot these things, you know, have like reached out because of, they like the first frog man. And I'm like, hell yeah. Like come, come join the party on part two. We need more help. You know, it's a bigger That's movie. Awesome. So uh, one thing that um, not a lot of found footage movies have, but I really like the soundtrack too. Um, can you reveal who Frog Lord is? I can't. No, I can't do that. No, no. That would be <laughs> that would be wrong. But he is a real artist. He's based in Bristol, UK, if I remember correctly. Um, he's fucking amazing. His music is so awesome. I, I was listening to him for years before we made Frogman, and I just like I just reached out on a whim, and I was like, "Dude, we're making a movie about a frog." Like, <laughs> I'd love to use some of your tracks, and he was super down. And he even like he set up a screening of Frogman at like wow. the local IMAX theater in Bristol, and did a live performance with his band before the screening. I was like, whoa, dude, that's that's awesome. So he's been, like, super supportive of it. I think that's probably the first time in history, I would imagine, that high 8 footage has been shown on an IMAX screen. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, but that has to be surreal, right? I mean, you, what was it like when you started seeing all of the, the positivity coming out about uh, Frogman? What, what did that, how did that feel, and what did, like, how did that impact you? It was truly surreal. Um... <clears throat> hard to believe and and just like really really uh gratifying and relieving because i you know like i said it took three and a half years and it was a hard process there was a lot of falling out of love with this movie and actually like straight up resenting it and wishing i didn't have to finish it um and then you know some new idea coming or like seeing the new edit and then like having that excitement for it like re-energized mm -hmm. um but it was difficult to get across the finish line and when we finally did it was like i think i think we're proud of what we've done here um i can't tell if it's good <laughs> i'm not sure if anyone's gonna care or like it um but this is the best version of it that we can make with what we've done so right. let's call it let's call it a day but I really, I was terrified that nobody was going to give a shit. And this was going to be one of those movies that comes out and, you know, maybe a few people talk about for a week and then just disappears into the ether. So, I mean, you know, all I can say is, like, we made this movie because we wanted to see it. We thought it would be cool. And that was our guiding star this entire time was, like, there's right. nobody asking for a Frogman movie. So let's just make the movie we want to make. And hopefully yep. there's other people out there, you know, who have watched every horror movie there that that's available like we have and they want something a little bit new so right yeah. so i do do like read a lot of your reviews or do you not or and how does that affect uh, the good and the bad yeah i i do read a lot of them i'd well i'd say you know when they started rolling in i was reading a lot of them um you still hungry yeah okay um and you know now it's kind of died down i don't i don't read as many of them as i did at the beginning but i was definitely curious at the beginning like what people liked what people didn't like the good and the bad um the bad doesn't really affect me because like nine times out of ten even more than that like the bad reviews are just like this movie wasn't for me and that's fine mm -hmm. you know like we didn't make this movie for everybody yeah. um and and there's been so much more positive feedback than negative that like it it outweighs it for me. Um, yeah, the you know there's like I think there's been like two instances out of you know the thousands of people that have watched the movie and and given their two cents. There's like two instances of people like coming to me and being like you like you fucking suck. You shouldn't be making movies. Like you should have this taken down from Apple. It doesn't deserve to be on there. And like that one hurt a little bit because <laughs> yeah. it was like not even like directed at the movie. It was directed at me. I was like, right. ooh, damn, dude. I can't imagine ever disliking a movie to the point that I'd find the director, reach out to him, and tell him how much he sucks. <laughs> right. Uh, in a way, I, you know, I, making movies, you, you always get, want to get emotions from people. So, <laughs> like, if somebody spent the time to look you up, and Sam's like, well, you've obviously made an impression on them. So. Yeah, yeah, it's wild, right? I mean, it's like, well, thanks for your three bucks, I guess, if you rented <laughs> it. Um. I, 
I don't know. I might have that conversation with Rob Zombie. I might. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'm really not a fan. I like his music. I don't like his movies. So um, how is the process different when you're doing a short? Because you've done several short films. Mm -hmm. And how does the process differ between doing a short film and a feature film? Um, it's It really is kind of similar. Um, it kind of just felt like, because I, I went from shorts to feature, it really just felt like, oh, this is kind of like it's always felt making a short just for way more shooting days. Um, the one thing that was like really, really uh, challenging, though, is like tonal consistency over the mm -hmm. over the course of the movie and like leaving room to figure out what that is. Um, right. Because, you know, you you like you write a story, you see it in your head, you have an idea of what it is. And then you invite you know, 10, 20 other creatives to collaborate on it with you, the actors, the production designer, like whoever, and they all bring something different to the table, you know? And I think it's a detriment to whatever project you're making and a detriment to their creativity to be like, no, don't do it the way you think would be cool. Do it the way, like, I want it to be done, you know? Right. So, like, it takes on a life of its own, and that's tricky when you're shooting stuff uh, again, like we ran into this pro problem of like, you know, shooting stuff for the third act, um, you know, early on because of scheduling and, and like, you know, logistics. And then later on realizing like, oh, that stuff we shot in the third act, now that we've shot most of the first and second act doesn't really make sense anymore. And that's something I've never had on a short because we're only shooting a short for like three, four days. Right. Um, so that was tricky. So, so you don't um, abide by the Stanley Kubrick method of filmmaking. <laughs> do it a hundred times, though. No? Do it one hundred and thirty times. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I admire it. I mean, like David Fincher doing like one hundred takes of the same thing, and apparently it works out. His movies are incredible, but I I can't imagine. I don't know how they do. It. <laughs> so I have a question. So um, you have you have a thing for long titles, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I watched your, and I'm gonna get the title wrong if I say the whole thing. The your ice cream short, uh huh. And that was so much fun. Like visually, that's beautiful. Like the color palette and all that. Did you come up with all of that yourself? Do you have somebody that helps you, helps you pin that down? How how did that work? Um, I yeah, I I came up with that palette, the color palette for that one. I really wanted it to feel slightly otherworldly. Um. Mm -hmm. And like really bubbly and cartoony and yep. sort of like early Tim Burton stuff, but like yep. more just like poppy pastels. Like I think I was calling it like bubblegum horror. Um, okay, that's fair. And we so then I showed that palette. We kind of had like a big meeting. I showed that palette to my cinematographer, production designer, wardrobe. And I was like, here's our colors. Like this is what we got to stick in. Um, and we were like really lucky to find a couple locations that fit our colors exactly like that ice cream, uh, drive in. That is pretty awesome. It, yeah. It, it reminded me a lot of David Lynch. Oh, yeah, wow. I can see that. Yeah. I can well, see that for sure. Yeah. Like, um, what's the one called? Uh, okay, okay. Blue Velvet. Sorry. Blue uh, Velvet, yeah. But, but that kind of like sort of uh, picket fence, 60s, colorful, but there's more going on, on under the surface, right? Right, um, yeah. And, you know, it, it's really amazing for, for a short. Yeah. Right, because, you know, a lot of shorts are just kind of quick, and but it looked like a lot of work went into that one, too. Yeah, yeah was, that, that's the most time I've ever, and effort I've ever spent on a short, um, just because, like, the colors were the most important thing to me, like, really just making that feel like an alternative Earth uh, David Lynch is a great example. I kind of love those things like Streets of Fire, where it's like mm -hmm. out of time, you know, like everything's kind of 50s aesthetic, but we don't really say we're in the 50s. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Who did your the the same special effects artist work on that one? Is did Frogman? Yep. Because yep, that, that was, was a, right. those were pretty amazing. Like I I was really impressed by the special effects, especially for seven minutes. Like they were fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. That was that was really fun. Again, like on every project, we kind of try and bring something new to the table to challenge ourselves. And that one was like, let's not do uh, prosthetics on somebody. Let's, you know, if their faces are exploding, like, let's take away, you know, because we've all seen like Skeletor and like shit like that, where like 
they've got this big piece on to make it look like they're a skeleton. It was like, right. no, let's take meat away. So right. we like casted those kids' heads and faces, and then he chipped away at their faces and built these skeletons underneath. Um, and then, so we had these practical heads, but then we like 3D scanned them to digitally add them in. Um, so that, that was like our big challenge on that one was like, how can we meld practical in three and, and VFX in a way to kind of show you something really weird to the point that you don't even know what you're looking at. Right. And it was, it was done really well. Um, but like with the Ballad of Squirt Reynolds, that was different because that's mostly practical effects, right? Yeah. So how did how did that how did that come about? Because that was fun too. I, I enjoyed that one. That was pretty funny. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that was um. So the first the first thing I did was when Susser stirs, which was kind of a bit of a tongue in cheek but pretty dark body horror story. Um, and you know, I I had no idea how that was going to do, and it did really really well on the festival circuit. And so I kind of panicked of like, oh, God, what do I do next? Like, I think I just peaked with my first short. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, should I do a body horror thing again? That's what people are going to expect. Um, and the only idea that I had that I was really excited about was Squirt Reynolds. And that really just started with the one kill in it, the duck call kill, where he pulls a girl's voice box out and yep. then uses it to lure another girl to her with her voice. Yeah, I, I just thought that'd be a funny like fantastical kill. I mean, I, I love slasher movies, but yeah, I, you know, I, I'd say my, my favorite franchise, even though it doesn't always have the best entries is Nightmare on Elm Street because yep. the dream aspect means every kill is wildly different and yep. is a set piece. And I get so annoyed when I watch a slasher movie and there's like five, you know, machetes to the gut or throat slits or whatever. Like I want the kills to be weird and cool and memorable. Right. Um, so it all started with that. And then we just kind of built a story around that um, kind of inspired by like wet, hot American summer, like just trying to do like something like a, like absurdist comedy in the framework of like a camp slasher. That, that explains the crop top on the killer. 100%. It, yeah. Now I get it. <laughs> Mark. Yes. So Jim, do you yeah. have any constructive criticism for Anthony? I, I don't. The three things that, uh, and I hate to say, just three things. I, I've enjoyed all the, all three of of your pieces that I've seen. I, I don't have any constructive criticism. Do you, Mark? We, we can't just kiss ass all the time. Yeah. I'm I'm not kissing ass, Mark. I really so the, don't. So the one thing that I like watching, like I say, I really enjoyed Frogman. I thought some of the sound mixing was a little like I. I struggled to hear some of the, um, no, could be because I'm an old man, but um, yeah. some of the sound mixing was, I, I thought, needed a little bit of work. But that's it. Yeah. I mean, that's, to that's totally fair. That was, um, you know, I, like, I rewatched Blair Witch a lot before mm -hmm. Frogman. And <laughs> something that I admire about it is the fact that the sound is imperfect. Mm -hmm. And, like, when, when a character is like, you know, 50 feet ahead of the camera, you can barely hear what they're saying. Um, right. And I wanted to take that approach. So the first two days on set of shooting Frogman, we did not have uh, like a, like a professional sound recordist. And it was like on camera, on board mics um, and someone maybe operating a boom just for safety. And I panicked after those first two days. And I was like, you know what? Even if we want it to sound like shit later, we can make it sound like shit. Let's get good sound. Right. Um, and so the reality is we did not get good sound for every day of shooting. And I really regret that because I thought that was going to work. And then there are scenes where I'm like, okay, what they're saying actually matters. This is not Blair Witch where it's just people screaming in the woods. Like right. what they're saying is character development and relational and it really sucks that you can't hear what they're saying right now. So I, I appreciate that feedback. And that's definitely something we're going to improve going forward. I, I yeah. just met the cast Blair Witch this year. And yes, Eduardo Sanchez. Very cool. Yeah. I also met um, Rogero Diodato many years ago. Oh, boy. Director of uh, Cannibal Holocaust. Oh, a, man. Yeah, Am I supposed to be impressed by that, Mark? You well, you know, it's, a found, it's found footage kind of uh, heritage. <laughs> there he, ju he yeah. just likes to brag anthony don't don't let him talk I, to you like that. I, oh i also met burt reynolds talking about Ooh, baby. yeah yeah
Jim? Yes, Mark. Have you ever met Burt Reynolds? <laughs> no, I have not. No. Okay. You missed your uh, chance. <laughs> I did, unfortunately. But that's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. Mark, what else yes. you got? Um, I, th I think we've grilled Anthony enough, unless you have additional questions. I do, actually. Oh, so, no, there you go. Know, so why are you asking me? <laughs> because you get upset if I don't. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so you talked about um, about how you were inspired by Lovecraft and, and you enjoy his stuff. Um, what other, why horror? What, why, why do you want to make horror films? Um, you know, there, there's, there's definitely something deep seated that, uh, I don't know if I can fully explain cause it's just like at my core. I, mm -hmm. I was watching horror films when I was very, very young, probably too young. Um, and even, you know, even the, like the kids movies I was watching growing up, like never ending story and dark crystal, I was like. Yeah fascinated by the parts of those movies that terrified me uh right. like the nothing or is that his name or the darkness or whatever in it was the never nothing. story yeah the yeah. nothing that the nothing. that like creepy puppet wolf yeah, in the oh yeah. my god what a horrifying image so, so okay the wolf is gamork who served oh, okay. nothing yeah okay that's right that that puppet is an all-timer like he pure is, nightmare absolutely. fuel yeah. Um, the gremlins I watched as a kid so much and like, you know, even though they're fun and like kind of Looney Tunes esque, like mm -hmm. they're terrifying looking. Like they really are like yeah. they're out of like the, the scariest nightmare. They're just they're just acting goofy. Right. Um and yeah, my parents noticed what I was like taking interest in and really fed into it instead of going like, Oh god, he's gonna end up like a weirdo. <laughs> uh <laughs> they're like, Cool, you like horror? Here's Goosebumps books. Like you you know. Um but as as far as like now, right now, why do I want to keep making horror movies? It's what I love most. Uh, the thing that I love most about making movies is is trying to make something that doesn't exist in reality. Like, right. I want to make a magical frog man or, you know, like face explodes, like make uh, like an alternate earth that's like a little bit different than ours. Um, that's kind of the funnest stuff to me is to bring something into creation or into reality that doesn't actually exist. Um, and it's just so versatile. You can mash up horror with anything. It can be horror comedy, horror drama, you know, horror romance, uh, sci-fi right. action. Um, so I, I can't imagine ever wanting to leave horror, honestly. I, I agree. So, so uh, what are some of your favorite horror movies? Then? Um, the Fly is my favorite of all time. Um, the Evil Dead, the first one. And Thank you. I, I love the second one and I would not argue with anyone that prefers the second one, but I saw the first one first <laughs> yeah. and it made me want to make movies because it made me realize like this is this was not clearly not a movie made by Hollywood or by a studio. This is clearly friends out of the woods. Right. And I was just so infinitely. That's, that's my comfort movie. I could watch it any day of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just so cozy. It's such a cozy return for me. Um, yep. Hellraiser. Mm -hmm. Is just one of the most disgusting movies ever. Like I, I want to take a shower after it every time. <laughs> I must be the weird, the only weird person that always that thought it was a, uh, a little sexy. A little oh, sexy? Right. It's, it's definitely sexy. sexy. Yeah, it's it's definitely a little sexy. I'm not gonna lie. Well, yeah. <laughs> Any other uh, movies, like even non horror, that you would want to talk about or inform the audience about your uh, cinematic uh, tastes? Mm, non horror, okay. Uh well I, I I think I think Titanic is the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> and you know, that's by James Cameron who definitely knows what he's doing and definitely knows horror, but that movie to me is just absolutely timeless. I think like it's aged so well. It's mm -hmm. got it, like as far as a mainstream movie, it's got everything you could ever want in a movie. It's got romance, sex, action, uh, you're maybe learning something. It's historically accurate. <laughs> and just like, you know, as far as like the crazy shit that's happened in reality that we could mm -hmm. talk about, like disasters and wars and all that kind of stuff, a ship sinking is not that fantastical or crazy. But every time I watch that movie, I'm like, holy fuck, this happened. Like this ship was pointing up towards the sky and people were right. holding on to it, realizing 
this ship is like we were sailing on this ship a couple hours ago and now it's going to be down at the bottom of the fucking ocean and if we don't do something we're going to be down there with it too i mean it just it blows me away every time i i did enjoy the man falling uh onto the propeller <laughs> oh yeah watching it see, see that in 3d if you can it's a whole new <laughs> i i hated that movie with a passion <laughs> There's a reason, though. It's not about the movie at this point, though. I, I have a story, because I, I generally do. Right, Mark? Well, so, yeah. But that, I mean, you don't have a heart, so your heart can't go on, Jim. That's but true. But anyway, yes. My ex-wife saw the movie in theaters uh, four times. And on her fifth time seeing it, she, her and her mother decided to sit me down and tell me everything that was going to happen for three and a half hours. <laughs> and then I had to go see the movie. That was just too much. And then I had to spend $100 for the double VHS tape that came out. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Well, that's Let's an interesting trauma <laughs> because we'll be here all night. I'm Don't sorry start, to, Mark. to bring up your trauma, Jim. <laughs> it's okay. I appreciate that other people appreciate it. So there is that. That's a weird way to go into watching a movie after having the entire thing explained to you. That's not, yeah, exactly. not, not my ideal process. Right. Oh my God! This scene is going to make you cry so hard because this is going to happen. Not anymore. Yeah. Oh, Bruce Willis was dead at the end of that movie, huh? No yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of Bruce Willis, Die Hard. Oh, oh yeah. God! Who doesn't love Die Hard? Movie. Yeah, I agree. Mark, what are your what are some of your favorite non horror movies? We've never had that conversation. Um. So, I mean, I, I guess we can look at whenever you talk about action movies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh. Also by John McTiernan, um, Predator. Oh yeah, I, I guess it's horror-ish. It's horror-esque. Yes, <laughs> it's horror-esque. Um, I do love like a good courtroom drama. Um, so I love like the original Inherit the Wind huh. with Spencer Ooh. Tracy in it. Uh, Twelve Angry Men. Did I ever tell Great you I was movie. in that play, <laughs> Mark? What? Did I ever tell you I was in that play? No. Yeah, I was in Twelve what? Angry Men. I played what? the bailiff. How, how interesting. <laughs> you really don't care. <laughs> um, so, uh, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm, trying to, uh, oh, I'm trying to think right now. Uh, like, uh, so if we go to action movies, right? Um, yeah. Things like Robocop. Of course. Oh, yeah. Um, some of the martial arts stuff uh, with Tony Jaren, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Lee, big fan of Bruce Lee. Uh, Shaw Brothers stuff um, okay. in general. Uh, Equilibrium. I've, I've never seen, seen Equilibrium it. with Christian no. Bale in it. I know, but I never watched it. Oh, it's fun. That, it's about Demolition Man. That's one that I recently Man. rediscovered, and I'm like, this is a masterpiece. This is such <laughs> a cool, weird world. The restaurant you know, wars are amazing. And I still want to know how you use the seashells. It, it's the oh, yeah. three. <laughs> And Wesley Snipes is just like on another level in that movie. Oh, absolutely! He was fantastic. In fact, that that whole cast was great. It was, it was. just it's it's just so cheesy and ridiculous, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, as I'm thinking, Jim, how about you tell everyone some of yours? So a lot of mine are going to be family movies, which oh, is I'm, weird, I'm, right? I, I go from one extreme to the uh, other. Um, when I was, a, you know, I love animated films, um, and not the newer ones. Like I, I'm a big fan of one of my favorite, I love big hero six. Um, I loved Wally mm. and not just for the, for the, uh, the animation, but the story, mm -hmm. like I, I fully believe that we are headed into that sort sort of society and to see it pictured on the screen like that in a family movie was great. Um, I love the family horror, like gremlins. I probably watched a lot of movies that I was too young to watch. Like I think it was eight or nine when I first watched Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, and one of my favorite movies still to this day. I love the whole franchise. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, you love the uh, remake the best though. Fight me, Mark. <laughs> I, um, I I don't hate the character of Freddy in the remake. I hate the story. The story and the acting are terrible. The character of Freddy, Jackie Earl Haley, was not terrible. But you didn't <clears> stand him at all. I don't know what no, they did because, with his right, voice. Because of, right, because of the new prosthetics, you really couldn't. He couldn't I even agree. speak. I did, I did like that, Freddie, and it was a shame that, you know, he put so much passion into that. And, like, 
it's weird that they try to do something so vastly like different with yep. Freddy, and yet everything else about that movie is a carbon copy of the first one. Oh, well, uh, the, yep. the, the, the micro naps, those were pretty interesting. That was like the one interesting idea that movie had. Other yeah. than that, the worst thing you could do when it comes to a remake, in my opinion, is remind people of the first one. Like, if you're going to remake a movie, remake it. Do something new. Don't remind right. me how much I like the first one and that you're doing a pale comparison, like, copy of it. I just want to go watch the first one now. Agreed. You know? Especially if your effects are even worse. Like, the whole Freddy, you know, uh, coming through the wall. Like, yeah. that CGI would just look fucking terrible. Exactly. Yep. Like, like, and the, then you got something like... like a plastic sheet looks way better. Yep. Yeah. And there's like, and uh, the Omen remake did that also, where it was like that they used the same script as the original. And like, we're going to do the same kills, but like, yep. instead of one spire coming down and stabbing them or a piece of glass, it's going to be like 50. You know, it was just right. like everything was just like turned up to 11 to like try and make it more intense. It was like, it was more effective the first time around. And then you right. got something like Suspiria. Like, in my opinion, that's how you do a remake yep. because it it does its own thing. It doesn't try to, to, like, pay homage to the first movie at all. It takes, like, the great ideas that are in the first movie and then does something completely different with them. Like, you can watch right. those movies back to back and you don't feel like you were just told the same story. Right. Agreed. Uh, the, the Maniac remake, I also think, does a, a really good job at doing something different. but similar. So good. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, um, I... I even so this is probably gonna sound stupid, but I love the Carrie remake. I, I know lots of people hate it, but I thought Angela Bettis did a great job. Mm. I don't really remember it to be honest. No. And it, it's a lot more truth it, it holds a lot more true to the book than it does the, the original movie. So it was I thought it was done really well. I even liked the Rage Carrie too, because I loved it when Sue Snow got the poker to the head. <laughs> was I that, it was wait. The remake, was that Chloe Grace Mortez? Was that Carrie? was the second remake. That was the second remake, okay. That was the second remake, was Chloe Grace Moretz. Um, but Angela Bettis was in the made-for-TV version that came out, which was a little Ooh. bit different. I don't know if I ever saw that. I'll have to check that out. Let me let me, let me me verify my sources. Mark, continue while I look this up real quick. Okay, uh, comedy, uh, like, comedy is really weird for me. I think it's probably more subjective than horror or any other genre. Love mm -hmm. Borat. <laughs> Borat was fantastic. Uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Right. With John Candy. Uh, yep. Moving away from that, uh, Dread. How could I have forgotten about Dread? The Judge oh, Dread. Yeah. Oh, Judge Dread. Okay. Yeah. Um, blah, 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 blah. Godzilla Minus One. Okay, it's a horror movie, but still so it's good. Not, not considered. Um, Did y'all see that in black and white? I did not yet. No, not it, yet. It's, you see it in black and white is truly a horror movie. It is like yeah. genuinely scary. Um, Cause I think they, they, I don't know. It feels like they did more to it than just turning it black and white. It feels older to me. And like with the time period it takes place in and the score being such a throwback, like it, right. it just feels like a better movie. I'm so I asked Mark this when I watched it. Um, when did Godzilla become a transformer? Because like when he's when he's you know gearing up to use his atomic breath or whatever you want to call it, like the <laughs> scales start moving on his back and yeah. they sound like they're pieces of metal. But, it, uh, it sounds like a robot. Yes, but Jim, you've never watched many Godzilla movies, have you? Uh, no, you've not been not. doing that for decades. <laughs> I'm not saying I, I understand that, but when did he become a transformer? Is the question mark? And you haven't been able to answer that. Uh, okay, so so the correct answer, Jim, is he does not become a transformer. <laughs> Well, Mecha Godzilla is kind of a transformer. <laughs> kind of, yeah, that's true. My favorite was always Son of Godzilla because the little Godzilla is so cute. He is so cute. <laughs> I, got, I got a figure of him I'm looking at right now. He warms my heart. Yeah. I have two, I have two figures that, that make me happy, and that's this little guy that I just got. Oh, nice. And then this guy. I don't know if you can see him. I might have to pull him down. This, face hugger? This was, no, not the face hugger. It's what's behind the face hugger. This guy. Oh God, I would not be anywhere so, near that. This makes me so happy. You have no idea. That scares the shit out of me. That is one of my favorite um, things from a horror movie ever. Absolutely, it looks like there's a clown. Buddy. 
Nope. Oh, that is so cute. I love that. That's so cute. Oh, God, he's adorable. Oh, my God. No, Why the hell have they not done him in these new movies yet? Like, right? you, you see, uh, you know, Baby Yoda or Grogu, whatever his name is, like, you yeah. know, that's literally all Disney's making money off Star Wars-wise at the moment. Mm-hmm. Give us Baby Godzilla, you cowards. Right. <laughs> is that a Mothman picture behind you? Uh Oh, yeah. This one is. Uh, What's the other one? Actually, that's the... The Kentucky Goblins, uh, and then over there's the Flatwoods Monster. These are all done by the guy that did the Frogman poster. Oh, wow. Yeah, he did a ph- phenomenal dude. job with Frogman, by the way. That poster is amazing. Right. Is that for he's, sale anywhere? Because so I need one. It is, yeah. Ronningpress.com, you can get the Frogman poster. Perfect. Yeah, I am doing that. I will be ordering one this week. Mark, you? Oh, thank you. Of course, I'll be ordering three. You Jim? liar. Oh, yeah. You're so, <laughs> he's so cheap. He's not going to order any. The only, the only way he's going to get it is if somebody buys it for him. Jim, Jim could take a photocopy and send. <laughs> See, <laughs> it makes Frogman posters make a great Christmas gift. It they are, they fun. are great. They are great. I cannot wait. Mark, your turn. What else you got? Uh, what for? Just movies in general? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, Arrival. I thought was great. Ew. Yeah. Why okay. do you like Arrival? Ew. <laughs> Yeah, it was just, I don't know, it was it was too long, honestly. I feel like they forced a lot of the science, and I just did not enjoy it at all. They forced a lot of the science. Is that your scientific uh, theory? No, no, it is my uneducated theory, Mark. My uneducated theory. Um, Everything, everywhere, all at once? That Love a- that movie. Oh, so good. The Hot Dog Fingers universe was my favorite ever. Okay. <laughs> Let me show you guys something. So I got a 3D projector recently, which, mm-hmm. by the way, like, y- even if you think you hate watching movies in 3D, if you, like, watch, it's a different technology for these 3- 3D projectors and TVs at home, and it is right. infinitely better than anything you'll see in a in a theater. This is my holy trinity of CG exploitation movies. Gods of Egypt, okay. Gods of Egypt. The greatest yeah. video game movie ever made for a video game that mm-hmm. doesn't exist. Uh, Alita Battle Angel and yep. Mortal Engines, which is like Fury Road meets Lord of the Rings or something. I don't know what you would, how you'd explain I, this movie. It's insane. There is a steampunk T-800. Yep. It was, it was beautiful. I watched that in theaters with my partner, and we both thought visually that was a stunning movie. I can only imagine watching it in 3D. I haven't been able to see 3D since uh, Michael Jackson was in the ball at Epcot, though. Oh, that was I a long time sur- ago. Yeah, I know. I, I had an eye surgery, so I can't I can't see 3D. Uh, I now. thought Michael Jackson did something to your eye. Easy. <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> Are you um, sure the- you're not drinking, Mark? <laughs> I'm not. Uh, the Martian? Yeah, I like that one. And uh, that would probably look great in 3D as well. Yeah. Uh, the Perfection. What? Okay, I'm just that going through a, like a list. That was a, oh, that that's was a, a great, great movie. movie. What about what about House? How do you feel about House? And I'm not talking about House Sue Mark. Wow. The one with William Cat and George Went. Me. Well, Brent. either one of you guys. Oh, House is, poster. House is, is great. But you can you can really tell that it they they took two different scripts and melded yes. it together because totally it's all over the place. It is, it absolutely. Is. But it, they did the same thing with Barbarian. It just didn't work as well. It was uh, awful. Well, yeah, it that one is very much a tale of two halves. <laughs> have, have, are you a fan of Barbarian, Anthony? Uh, I yeah, I I liked it. Um, I. I'm sad I saw it after the hype had already got into it. I try to see anything I'm interested in. I try to see as soon as humanly possible before people's opinions affect the way I watch it. Uh, but I still really liked it. I think the the best parts of it were kind of in the middle, and it yeah. it it fizzled out a little bit. But I mean, it was it was trying something, and I I give it respect for that for sure. Yeah, I I just wish it was two separate movies. I think it, I would have liked it more. That when it does that 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 hard ninety degrees and changes tone, it just it 
it lost it for me, unfortunately. Well, it is two separate stories. Uh, yes, I know. I mean, I know. when movies do that successfully, it's like it's such a fun thing. Um, it is, you know, like from *Dust Till Dawn*, and I mean *Predator*. Even you know, *Predator* is just like a bro movie in the jungle until he finally shows up, and that's like a solid fifty minutes in. I feel like I, I honestly hated *From Dust Till Dawn* when I saw it in theaters because I went in expecting a horror movie and got a horror comedy. So I was really disappointed, and then I watched yeah. it a year later, and I, I love it. I think it's great. It's half a horror comedy. <laughs> yeah. Well, those are honestly, those are some of my favorite movies. The movies you, like, you almost have to see once to digest, and then yeah. a second time to really appreciate. Uh, Under the Skin was one like that for me. I, like, I saw one. it the first time, and I was just like, this is boring. I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know. It just did not work for me at all the first time. And then I started talking about it with people and I'm like, Oh, I think I, Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. My, so my favorite horror movie. I have a thing for bizarre horror movies. Have you, either of you seen deep dark? I don't think so. So deep that's dark. a movie about a man who moves into an apartment is he's an artist and he finds a talking hole in the wall and it starts <gasps> it. They they fall in love and it starts creating art for him, and it just goes everywhere you oh, think it's gonna man. go. It's great. Ooh, oh shit! I gotta see that because I got I got a short about a guy that has a hole in the wall, <laughs> but I think it it probably cuts right to where that movie slowly builds up to. <laughs> yeah, that it does take a while to get to that point, I'm sure. <laughs> but it is it is I like it. I saw it's I think it's twenty eight. 2015 or something like that it's on tubi if you want to watch okay. it deep dark all right yes. how about the super mario brothers movie <laughs> are we talking about the animated one or Mar uh, the one with yeah, captain yeah. lou albano hell no i'm not talking about the animated one <laughs> <laughs> john leguizamo and captain lou albano were perfect in that movie i loved them dude john leguizamo is one of my favorite actors ever and like I've you know, regardless of what you think of the movies, his performance in that and then Spawn as the yeah. Violator, it's incredible. That guy's dedicated. He goes, he goes, I've been a big fan of his since his stand-up. And I freaking loved him in his stand-up in the late 80s, early 90s. And just his acting career, he does everything. And he's always amazing. Yeah. I've never seen, I've never not enjoyed him on screen. We actually, so we have a feature script of Squirt Reynolds written. And... You know, we we wrote a role that could that could easily be whoever, but we wrote it for John Leguizamo because did like, you really? He, he is one of my dream actors to work with. That's he awesome. Man. The menu, I think, was the last thing I saw him in. Oh yep. yeah, another good movie. That was a fun movie. I enjoyed it a lot, and I don't. I'm not typically a fan of uh, on Anya Taylor Joy. Oh, I'm she was great. Taylor. She was. Yeah. She was fantastic. But I'm not a bit. I did not like The Witch at all. I thought mm. it was boring and, and drawn out, but well, I loved her in that horrible. movie. No, I'm not blaming her. I'm just saying most. I, I haven't seen a whole lot that I've enjoyed her in, I up see. until up until the menu. I like the witch. She's definitely no Jennifer Carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> I have some really strong feelings about Jennifer Carpenter and Sherry Moon Zombie. <laughs> Jim despises them with the passion. I do. I don't like seeing them on screen. They bother me. Hmm. Do you have any actors that just bother you, Anthony? Uh, I mean, I guess you can't really say that, right? Right? Because you you might have to work with them someday. Yeah, I probably should. I probably <laughs> well, <with your>, should. <laughs> right? But, I mean, yes. The, the answer is yes. I do have some of those actors, and I'll leave them nameless. Oh, right? Yeah, now. we we won't ask you to name anybody because we don't want to compromise your your job. <laughs> so, um, other than Frogman Two, what else is next for you, Anthony? Um, shooting a horror short in a couple weeks here. Um about a girl who gets her eyeballs gouged out. Uh, it's okay. A, it's a fun one, I think. But not for her. Um, right. <laughs> Clearly. And, so you're, uh, you're channeling Giallo. Was it, it's Giallo, or it's Giallo, right? Mark, Giallo, that, yeah, that yeah. Does the eye stuff? Well, well it's, uh, it's very low to a Fulci. Fulci, that's, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's going to be like, you know, like basically like, one of her eyes gets gouged out, but still connected, and so we do a whole lot of POV stuff of like. Oh, that's gonna be freaky. To like, operate it almost like Aldra <laughs> from uh, Dark Crystal. Did yeah. Um, and Did uh, besides that, um, I've got a few other feature scripts ready to go that I'm trying to find the funding for. Um, nice. Yeah, 
I mean, we've got plans like within like more plans within the Frogman universe, but you know, I'd like to kind of switch off and do something outside of that when I can too. So if you're not doing cryptid horror, what is your next favorite genre? Is it just body horror or? Um, well, I mean, I, I feel like I'm probably working body horror into everything. Um, okay. I've got, I've got something that's kind of like pet cemetery meets stand by me. Um, uh that deal like these kids find a hole in the ground and start throwing things into it and weird things come out and so they're like body that's, horror gets into it but it's more like oh, nice. adolescent horror um that's, that, that's something like, have you seen the pit the night yeah. movie yeah. i was just gonna say i don't yeah. think i have seen that yeah it's a it's about a boy who finds a hole in the forest and yep. starts- and he- and he finds that there's little creatures in there, and he starts feeding them. He starts feeding the oh, people. Shit. And then they watch then, that. I don't want to ruin the ending of it, though. It's not even that. That that kid is super weird in that movie. Like the character, he really is. Like like he there's really a is. scene with the babysitter. It's just like oh, what? <laughs> They're going on my watch list. The pit, and then what was it from Dark? Or what, what was the other? Oh, whole deep, one? Dark. deep Dark. Deep Dark. Deep okay. Dark. Yes. yes, from twenty. I think you have to you have to put in the year because there's a few of them. Mm-hmm. So I think it's 2015. If you look it up on IMDb, so okay. I, I, Anthony, it sounds like you like movies uh, with holes in them. Yeah, I do like I do like me a hole. Yeah, <laughs> Mark, that was some low hanging fruit. <laughs> That's what he said. The juvenile humor I have to put up with from this 50 year old man. Yeah. Well, well. <laughs> We're catching it's, up it's the ultimate it's the ultimate unknown you know you see a hole and you're like what's in what's there done? or yep. what's on the other side of it you know it's a portal yeah it could be you never know hence the gate right I and mean, yeah. that that was kind of rough anyway yeah, horizon that wasn't a hole well i mean i guess technically it was a black hole yeah yes thank you Jim. so technically yeah but i mean hole. I don't know that a hole in space has the same impact a hole in the ground does because a hole in the ground is what, what are you a, a holistic expert on this, Jim? <laughs> yes, I'm a holistic if, expert. If anybody needs to uh, figure out whether something's a hole or not, please reach out to Jim. Reach out yeah. to Jim, your yeah, resident give holologist. You... That's right, my holologist. <laughs> uh, so, what? What is what would be your dream, um, your dream script? Like, what what is the movie that you haven't made that you want to make? Um, if money wasn't the object, there's yes. uh, there's this story, this novel uh, called Biomelt, which is actually by the same author Carlton Mellick that wrote Face Explodes. Um, okay, and hmm. it takes place in this like fucked up world where, uh, like basically because prisons were overpopulated. They start. They created this uh, process of melting people down, and then like bringing them back as like one person. Um, oh. And then it got out to the public where they're like, "Hey, wait! Like, you know, I suck at math, but I'm really good at this thing. You know, or like, whatever. Like, let's melt together and just be a better person." Um, so it becomes something that everyone does to the point where if like you hit 18 years old and you haven't melted with somebody, you're a weirdo for still huh. just being like the person you were born and <laughs> it so like that's kind of the setup for the the world and then from there there's this crazy story that takes place in like what what they call a bonding motel which is like almost like the kind of motel you would meet at to just have like a one night stand or a prostitute or something but you meet right. up at these hotels to bond together to like melt okay. together and i would want to do it as a musical I think it would be super fun. It's been a, it's been a hot minute since we've had you know like a Rocky Horror Picture Show, right? Um, and I think it'd be super fun to have like a duet of like two people that are gonna melt together, and then they go in the machine, and then it comes out, and they're doing a solo about the new person they are. <laughs> it it <laughs> so, almost gives me uh, vibes of society. Definitely, it's... yeah, for sure. Like Brian Usna should produce it. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> You talk about two people melting, and I immediately start thinking of the movie Doppelganger with Drew Barrymore, where she splits in half, and I just I picture her singing through the whole thing. What is that? I've never heard of that. <laughs> it's oh, a man. it's an it's an old um, '90s movie. Yeah, it's an it's a, a '90s movie where she keeps seeing this other version of herself, 
and then it just gets all kinds of really bizarre and then at one point she splits in half in the middle of a living room whoa okay man you guys filled my watch list today <laughs> Ooh, uh, the other one i was thinking about uh, again lovecraft from beyond oh yeah love whenever, whenever they merge together at the end yep. she hasn't seen it i have not typical typical it's not a kid's typical movie. me and now right now i won't watch it just because mark wants me to I don't care. <laughs> the last movie I trusted him on, Anthony, was um, he showed me my first Yellow movie, and it was so stupid. Which movie? So incredibly stupid. It was um, the New York Strangler. No, right? New York. Oh, New York Ripper. Ripper. New York Ripper. Oh, I love the New York Ripper. Oh the my god, it was. He does the Donald Duck voice. Yep. Yes, I love that one. movie. <laughs> so does he. He did. He did turn me on to the Last Shark, which which is probably one of my favorite shark movies now. I don't know if I've seen that. It's an Italian knockoff. It's so bad. The, it's you know, so bad. Multiple all the Italian ways. knockoff. That's not the one it that was, was released also as Cruel Jaws, is it? Yes. Oh, it, isn't it, it, Mark? Oh, no. They're separate ones, I believe. Oh, are they? Okay. The, yeah. Um, are you sure? The Last Shark was one that was sued by Warner Brothers and banned from the U.S. Because <laughs> they say they stole too much of Jaws from it. Mm, okay. It's a Italian movie. What do you think? Oh, no, that is not the same one. Because that one takes place in Florida. <laughs> Peter Benchley wrote Cruel Jaws. Huh. No, no, uh, no. I doubt it. They probably just stole his uh, work, so they probably just... Uh, <laughs> he was, he's, he's credited on the, on the poster. And he's <laughs> credited on IMDb. What? For Cruel Jaws, not The Last Shark, Mark. No, no I know. Look. No, I, I couldn't believe that. Who wrote Cruel Jaws? Uh, it's going to be Peter Benchley, Robert Fien, and others. <laughs> it's what it says. All right. Well, oh, Peter you. Benchley wrote the novel. Yes, you're right. They just oh, ripped okay. off his novel. Right, right. But yeah, they, yeah. they, you know, they put it in the poster, right? <laughs> but I'll tell you how impressed I was with the Last Shark. We watched it, and then I, I was at Target, and I saw a pinata of a shark, and I said. I found him because at one point it just looks like a cardboard shark doing this in the water. <laughs> it's fucking great. I love that movie. Okay. I'll have to check that out. It's so terrible and it's in such in the best way possible. Mark? Yes. Next. Um, will we move on to what we've watched? Sure. So Anthony, we have this this little segment um where we talk about just what we've watched in general, games we've played, books we've read, any of that. Okay. So, uh, would you guys anything? mind if I, I ran to the bathroom super quick? Yeah, no problem. That? Okay, yeah, right there. Okay, I'm going to run too. Yep, I will be the only one on the live stream yeah. for a little bit. Just talk to yourself. Yeah, well, I have Veronica. We have Veronica in the audience. We can talk to her. Oh, okay. Hi, Veronica. I'm sitting here all by my lonesome. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out. We appreciate it. Do you have any questions for Anthony? He is the director of Frogman. And I actually, I think writer too. Okay. I can do that. I can't wait to read Daniel Volpe, Veronica. So we have we have somebody watching us in our audience, by the way, Anthony, and she wants to know what is your favorite creature feature book? Creature feature book? Yes. She's so Veronica is my my splatterpunk friend and she loves everything vile. Like she reads extreme horror books. So she wants to know what your favorite creature feature is. Hmm. Gotta look over my shelf. Huh. That's a good question. Um well, maybe it would count as a creature feature. There's a book called The Troop. Which oh, we is, I uh, love that. We both loved book. that book. Yeah, incredible. I've, like, I, so, I want to see that movie so bad. If you have... Well, there's there's actually a TV show that was based on the book. Really? Yeah. It's, so it's sort of adjacent. It, it, it talks about the life of one of the cops that's mentioned in the books and where he's investigating what, what happened after. 
I'll well, get you the name of it. I'll message you on Instagram and, and give you the name of it as soon okay. as I find it. I forget the name of it. Awesome. Um, so that was exciting, but they are supposed to be making a movie out of that. If you like that kind of horror, you should check out a book called Rise by Erica Summers. Okay. It's freaking amazing, and it's just as disgusting. Right. Okay. Um, recently, I read something called Whale Fall, which I guess is kind of a creature feature. Like, was that good? It was. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, the the structure of it is really interesting. Um, yeah. But yeah, guy. I mean, majority of the book, dude's stuck in a whale, <laughs> trying to get out. So kind of a creature feature, a little bit like so it's, Pinocchio it's... and Monstro. I was going to say, it's essentially Jonah's story, right? <laughs> He's yeah. in a fish for 40 days or whatever it was. <laughs> Mark, what about you? What's your favorite creature feature book? Uh, uh, the Relic. Okay, I can I can get behind that. I hate the movie now that I read the book, though. No, I think the movie, too. <laughs> I'm kidding. I still like the movie, but... So, I don't... Have you read The Relic, Anthony? I haven't, no. So they wrote out in the movie they write out the main character from the book. Really? The, the detective. Yeah. Tom Sizemore is not in the book. Or is he that is, who it is? But he's a, he yeah, Tom Tom Sizemore's in the book, but he's a bit part. He's not the main detective. Weird. Well, okay. well he, he kind of shares shares it. Yeah, I mean he sort of does. And he become he becomes more prevalent though in, in the, the next sequence of books, but yeah. in that book he wasn't he was just introduced, so he wasn't that prevalent. I recommend that whole series of Yeah, it's fantastic. Um I think there's probably like twenty five of them right now. Yeah, and there's two they're offshoots su- now. Oh they're my super, god. They're super well um written, really interesting. Um usually have a horror aspect. In there. There's 25 books in the Relic universe. So there is. Well, it's the so Pendergast. It's called um, the Pendergast series by uh, Preston and Child, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Preston and Child. Um, and it's different cases that he investigates, and the Relic was the first. Okay. And he's kind of like a the uh, Pendergast. It's kind of like a Sherlock Holmes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. Who's rich and very, you know, sophisticated, but he can also, you know, fight when he needs to. So. And he's very enigmatic, right? He's very mysterious yep. to the people that don't know him. Oh, another one I I read recently. Um, again, the uh, by Carlton Mellick, who wrote Face Explodes. Um, it's called Big Meat, and it's a kaiju story where like the 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 book starts with like this kaiju has just been decimating the U S and they finally take him down in Portland, Oregon. And so like now the whole book is about the cleanup crew months later, like the whole city's on uh, quarantine because there's all these gases coming out of the thing and it's like toxic. And, and so like they're like Portland is just like ruined because of it. Like, you know, there's, there's not enough supplies for people that are trying to live there. You can't leave. And so they're just cleaning this thing up. And the book is about like a team that goes into the, the, the guts. They're like the stomach cleanup crew. And right. they end up having to like find their way out because like the, the way they got in gets blocked off. And there's like junkies living in this kaiju corpse, like getting oh. high off some weird thing that grows inside of it. Um, incredible, incredible book. That sounds great. Veronica recommends the Pope Lick Massacre by Eric Butler. She said it's a, Fun creature feature about a goat man who mimics. Oh, yeah. The Oh, I haven't heard of that book, but the Pope Lick Monster, which I assume that must be what it's based on, is like one of my favorite cryptids and definitely oh, what I want to play with in a movie sometimes. So I'll read that for sure. There you go. That's awesome. Anything that you've watched or – are you a gamer? I am, yeah. I, it's hard to – find the time like i used to but you know right. the, the winter is when i get the, a good amount of gaming in and this winter i finally played the last of us part two which was incredible uh miles morales spider-man um resident evil the village um and right now i'm still trying to get through uh the new god of war ragnarok so is it more action adventure than games that you play yeah, pretty much. I kind of like I used to play online when I was in high school and stuff, and now I just don't have the time. Yeah. 
to to like keep up with it and i definitely don't <laughs> i can't justify like paying for the subscription to like keep the online thing so it's mostly like single player stuff for me now yeah i think the last of us part two is the best narrative game i've ever played i've never been so good never been so conflicted about like the final act in that oh it's I, incredible i just bought a working coleco vision <laughs> with with the smurfs because that was my favorite game as a kid <laughs> That, is, that, is, that, is that like The Last of Us at all, Jim? Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. St- the narrative's almost exactly the same. That, yeah. that was the inspiration. Did you not know that? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not the Smurf expert. <laughs> That's the, the Sega Genesis for me right now. I got my Sega Genesis and Earthworm Jim 2. Oh, I love Earthworm Jim. I used to yeah. love that game. That and Gex. Gex, yeah. Is that right, Earthworm? What? Is that right, Earthworm? Yes, yes, Mark, it is. To, to I, got, I got the joke, thank you. Eventually. No. Earthworms aren't that bright. N- never heard that before. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. In what context? Dude, I... <laughs> I have been a gym for 48 years. I've heard just about everything. Uh, anyway. I believe you have. Mar- yes, yes, I have. So, anything else you wanted to talk about? Anything that you've you've experienced recently? Mm, I'm watching Gen V. Uh, what do, What do you think of it? I love it. I've got one episode to go. I, I really, really like it. I, I gave up after three episodes. Oh, I don't, I don't know. It just didn't have the right magic for me, like the boys did. It's It's very different, which is what yeah. W- that's what I like about it. Is it definitely it very much feels like it's the world of the boys, but I mean. Like, I grew up with, like, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I love yeah. that kind of teen, you know, like, drama stuff. Um, and that's right. very much what this is. It's, like, that within the boys' universe. Yeah. And that's fair. I, I it, It's it's a well-done show. I just not not for me. Do, do you know it's a, a great superhero horror movie? Brightburn? Yep. Yep. I love, love that movie. Mm-hmm. I got to say, though, Elizabeth Banks is pretty much great in everything she does. I freaking love her. She's awesome. Even, even it, she was the best part of Totally Killer, because I didn't care for that movie, but her role in that movie was fantastic. I haven't seen that yet. You're not missing much. I, I remember the 80s, so the nostalgia just didn't hit <laughs> for me the way it did for most people. <laughs> Mark, what did you think of Totally Killer? Not seen it. Color me shocked. Yeah. What about you, Mark? What have you seen lately? Um, I've been watching the Euros. Jim, have you been watching them? The Euros? No. Yeah. No. No. Football. You mean soccer? No, it's football. It's soccer. It's football. Soccer. So I've been watching that. That started um, Friday. So that's been taking up a lot of time because it was like three games a day. So. Ooh. Pretty cool. Um, I eventually got around to the boys. Like, yeah, the most recent season. Did, did uh-huh. you see season two? Did you see episode two? Yeah, I saw all of them. There's a lot of penis in episode two. That's okay. It's just, it, <laughs> that it was just me. surprising. No. no, it was just surprising. I mean, no. they, they 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 always go there, but there's a guy that clones himself like a hundred thousand times, and they're all naked. Well, I think I think probably the Gen Z thing is a little bit worse. <laughs> Doesn't she shrink down? <laughs> mm-hmm. so, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, the boys just awesome. Love yeah, all the is. actors in it. Love it is the irreverence. Um, I'm, I think that's about it. So Nothing much. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I watched much this week. I did listen to. Oh, Veronica's yelling at me that it's football also. Um, I did watch uh, or read uh, Seven Rabbits by our friend Timothy King, who we went to Spooky with, Mark. Yep. He It was just released on audiobook, so I've read the book already. But I listened to him narrate it on – or I'm, I probably ruined that because he goes by T.C. King as a narrator. But he narrated the book himself, and it was great. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's a secret. Um, I did listen to one other book this week that I really – didn't care for though. Hang on. Oh, I finished. 
No, that's hex. It's got to be on chirp then. Chirp. Yeah, so I have several books that I bought from there. Like I bought something Wicked This Way Comes because I love the movie. But the quote unquote audiobook is just a dramatic reading of the script. So I'm like, if I want to hear this, I'll just watch the movie. Um, but I did start listening to Warlock for Hire and Jesus is it Boring. It's it's so bad. I've I've really been in a slump. So I listened to this extreme horror audiobook called The Dark Side of Hell, and ever since then, nothing's really hitting for me. Nothing. Mm. So maybe, maybe I, I have to do extreme horror now, Jim. I guess maybe I did read Carnivores. It's a physical book by K. L. Allister, who Mark, you'll remember on our last um, podcast episode, he was chatting with us a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to the sequel in that. And then, of course, I'm looking forward to the book where I get to die. I get to I get to die in two books this year, Anthony. I'm so oh, excited. Really? You have no idea. I'm so yeah. excited. And so, uh, Anthony, if you want to throw us into any of your movies, just our name, <laughs> if you're going to be killed or 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 brutalized by a frogman, I guess, um, feel free. Y'all are down to be cannon fodder. Oh, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Good to know. One of our friends, one of my friends, Carlos, even made Mark my voice of reason because apparently I die from something stupid in his book. So, so you know, art reflects life. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. If you say so, Mark, if you say so. I am the voice of reason. You are not. <laughs> you are absolutely not. What else you got, Mark? Anything else? No, that's that's, that's it. Yeah? So, Nothing Anthony, exciting. thank you for hanging out with us today. I really appreciate it. This has been awesome. You were great. Um, is there anything that you want to pop, maybe your social accounts or anything like that? Um, before uh, we, uh... Yeah, if you want to keep up with like what we're up to... Um... Cousins underscore Anthony at Instagram and then at Frogman Movie on Instagram. I didn't know there was a Frogman account. I oh, found I'm... yours because I looked for you specifically. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm... also me. So it's I'm... just. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's okay. I just read it. Yeah, sorry. And for our listeners, Screenbox, I think it's you can do like a seven day free trial. So you can. You got no reason not to watch it. Yeah, right? absolutely. And if you want, and is, if you want to see it in a whole new way, I have a secret stash of VHS tapes um, that I'm selling with T-shirts right now. So just really, me on Instagram, yeah. Uh, I will be messaging you on Instagram then. <laughs> <laughs> I will be doing that. Cool. I can't wait. It's the way to watch it. I think. Yeah, I, I have to buy a VHS player, but I still, <laughs> I've, just, I've just started collecting vi- dig, uh, physical media again, so I'm down for that 100. percent Hell yeah, I'm, I'm totally down. Mark? Yes. You got a VHS player? Uh, Cheapskate? No. no. I really expected you to have a Betamax. You know what I'm mm. Betamax? I never had Betamax. I always had VHS. You're disappointing me, Mark. Anyway, Anthony, thank you again.